On Larry King Now, actor Timothy Amundsen. We built the movie around Lassie recovering from his injuries. But that first down set, I quickly realized like, a lot of things had changed. I used to have a superpower where I could highlight my, my lines once and just have them memorized. I quickly realized I couldn't do that anymore. Plus, I don't know what my career's gonna hold. I don't know what kind of parts I can play. It's probably not gonna be what it used to be. I mean, I'm not jumping on a horse or chasing a guy with a gun anymore. But hopefully I'll work around and figure out other ways to do it. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, and today I welcome actor Timothy Amazon to the show. Timothy's best known for his roles on the TV show Psych, Judging Amy and Gallivant. In 2017, Timothy had a major stroke, continues to work through his recovery, appearing on This Is Us and American Housewife. He can next be seen reprising his role of Detective Lassiter for the movie Psych 2, Lassie Come Home. It'll premiere next spring on NBC Universal streaming service, Peacock. It's not Lassie the dog, is it? No, that's the joke of it. <laughs> My character's name was Lassiter, so they called me Lassie. It works. Good to have you back. Nice to see you again, sir. All right, tell me first, because I can get in on this. You had a major stroke in 2017. What happened? Um. They just, we don't exactly know what caused it, but the gist of it is I was in Florida at a film festival for a, an independent film that I had just done. And then I was actually in the Tampa airport getting ready to fly back to LA. I was in the men's room and then suddenly I, I had a bottle of Perrier. I was trying to screw the cap back on the bottle and my left hand wasn't working. I went, oh, that's weird. And then my left leg collapsed and I went down in the bathroom and and I stood back up and then went down again. So that's where I had the stroke. What were you thinking? Pretty much what the hell's going on. <laughs> Why is my leg working? What, did they rush you to the hospital? Yeah, so um, the guys in the bathroom, I guess, must have carried or dragged me out into the, into the waiting area, where luckily, there, I think there was a team of paramedics just happened to be there. So just someone got there. To be there. Yeah, the fire, yeah, I was incredibly lucky. And I was waiting to get on a plane to come back to LA. So if I'd gotten on that plane, I wouldn't be here today. So these paramedics came, took care of me, got me immediately to the hospital. Well, luckily, I was in Florida. In the hospital they took me to, I had one of the best stroke guys in the SID in the state working there. So I had a major craniectomy. And I see that bump on the head. I, several weeks I was in the ICU there. I was in the ICU for a week. I don't want to go through that again. No, I'd rather not. How quick could you get back to work? It took two years of th pretty much daily therapy to get to a position where I could, was able to stand out of the wheelchair, let alone walk. So I think it's been, it was about a year and a half, two and a half years, something like that, or two years and, and change. Was it tough to go back to work? It's very tough to go back. Because the first thing I went back to was the psych sequel, Last Year Come Home. Because my dear friend, I'd done that show for eight years, and my cast and crew really rallied behind me and rewrote the script so I could be, essentially, my character could recover. My character has a stroke on the show. I think I, I can say that. Might have been a spoiler alert. I just ruined the whole movie. <laughs> so they built the show, they built the movie around Lassie recovering from his injuries. But that first down set, I quickly realized like, a lot of things had changed. I used to have a superpower where I could highlight my, my lines once and just have them memorized. I quickly realized I couldn't do that anymore. So that was you, pretty You cool. lost the power of remembering the script. As quickly as I did, used to have it, yeah. I mean, because your memory is a muscle, which that one just got really damaged. But I have a bit of a... Um, blind spot on my left side because it affected my optical nerve. So having actors walking around me was a little disorienting to not quite know where everybody was all the time. I had a minor stroke. I was off work for a while. I don't want to bring myself into this, but I'm in a wheelchair just recovering to be able to walk. But I can talk and I can work and I got back here and the crew has been great. But I don't, I didn't have near what you went through. 
It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Do they know what caused it? All we know is that my carotid artery on the right side dissected. I was doing a really strenuous workout. They think that's what it had something to do with lifting heavy weights. And so at some point, it was trying to re re repair itself. And they think um, the wound let a clot go one day. And that's what hit my right side of my brain. When you say that hospital in Tampa is probably one of the tops in the country, what did they do? Well, it was really the surgeon there. So they had to, because my brain started to swell, like it does after a stroke, they had to relieve the pressure, so they took off basically this whole side of my skull. I had nothing near that. No, it's a terribly dangerous surgery. And then they, here's the crazy part, they take the skull, and they inserted it into my stomach. They put a, um, a blood vessel to it so it stays viable. So they put it in your body so you, your body won't reject it when they put it back in. And then, I guess two and a half years later, it was ready to go back in my head. What was your mental attitude during all of this? It, it came and went. For the most part, it was pretty good. I don't know, I just, I kind of laid in that ICU and made the decision of, I can't lay in the corner and like a pity party's not gonna help me. My parents were both depression era. My grandfather was a coal miner. So I was like, and I actually have a picture of him right next to my treadmill. I've never met him, but I can just imagine his hearing his voice going, well, what's the matter, your leg hurt, kid? So that really keeps me going. Did you undergo physical therapy? I've been doing physical therapy pretty much every day for two years. I go to a neuro rehab clinic every day. Every day? Every day and do physical and occupational therapy and cognitive therapy to get just like mental skills back. What made you, frankly, decide to go back to work? I mean, you... With medical, I guess, help, uh, you could have afforded to stay home, I would imagine. They would have taken you, care of you. Why did you go back? That's what I've always been. I've been an actress since I was 21 years old. I actually, since I was a kid. Professionally, since I was 21. Sort of what I've always identified as an entertainer. So I don't know what else I would do. If did, what about the people you were working for? Did they all say it's okay to work with a stroke and the way you are is okay? We'll they work been, it in. The, the, my colleagues have been the most important thing in terms of making it possible for me to do this. I mean, the, sh the part on This Is Us was really written for me exactly to my disabilities. They wrote in the stroke. Yeah. And my, that character totally mirrors what I'm going through physically and emotionally. Dan Fogelman also created Gallivant, so he was an old friend. So that first day back was pretty nerve-wracking just being on this hugely popular show with tremendous actors and me not knowing how well I could still act. But having Dan on set was really quite comforting. We got right back to our old rhythm of him throwing me jokes and being able to dish them out. Are we going to see more of your character on the show? I'm not really sure. I think so. Do you consider yourself lucky? Are you angry? I went through all phases. What, how do you consider yourself? Were you mad? No, I, I really never went into the dark part. I, from the get-go, have always been lucky, or felt like I was lucky. I mean, I know it, just, it could always be so much worse. I have a f dear friend who lives down the street from me as an actor who came over to my house one day, who's asking me for a neurologist. He's like, why the hell do you need a neurologist? He was afraid he might have MS. And he came over the next day and he was just sheet white. So it's what happened? Because it's not MS, it's ALS. ALS. ALS, which is a really... Death sentence. I mean, yeah, I mean, just a, and he's got two beautiful kids and a wife and was at the top of his career. So I know it can always be worse. I guess that's how I've just kept the positive attitude. I just thought there's nothing. Like I said, being negative or being woe is me isn't going to help me. I also thought early on, you know, I've already beaten the odds. I became a successful actor years ago. It's like making it in this business is nothing compared to recovering from a stroke. So I thought, let's see if I can do it again. What an amazing story. When we come back, more with Timothy Amundsen on how he discovered acting 
We'll talk about his highly anticipated return to Psych. We'll be right back. Incredible story, Timothy Amazon. You joined the Seattle Children's Theater at age 12. Yes, sir. What, what made you pursue acting? You know, I saw a, a production of Death of a Salesman at the, at the Seattle Rep when I was in One of fifth my grade. Favorite plays. Absolutely, and it just it so blew me away. And it was it was an audience full of students, and these kids were so we were all so enthralled by this by these actors. And I left that play going, I want to do that. Like Did you want to play Biff? No, I always wanted to play Willie actually. <laughs> really? When I was in fact, when I was in high school, I was doing a, a, dr a division of debate called dramatic interpretation. Which is kind of acting. You get up and you, you do both characters. And I won the state championship that year with playing, doing the Biff and Willie scene. You played Biff and Willie. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. It's kind of schizophrenic. You get up and you play, you play both characters. One of the great plays ever written. It really is. Okay. Well, how did you get the break? Was Psych what made it for you? I think so. Yeah, psych really was the one. That? that was just an audition like anything else. You know, it's, and it's a comedy, but I just had the audition scene, so I didn't get the whole script. I didn't realize it was a cop. I thought it was a cop show. I didn't realize it was a comedy. So I put on my, my blue cop suit, went into mm -hmm. audition, and just before I started the, my scene, Steve Franks, the creator of the show, said, just so you know, it's not NYPD Blue, it's Moonlighting. I thought, oh, I could do that, because I loved that show as a kid, and just I had the comedic chops, I knew that. It's like a lot of guys can play a tough cop. It was really lightning in a bottle with that cast. Eight years is not a bad word between any of us. It was pretty extraordinary. Did Psych take off for you? Yeah, it really did. That's the one that still, I think, have the biggest fan base from. It's a show that, like, if you'd see, maybe you hadn't seen, a lot of people hadn't seen it, but if they had seen it, they loved it. So it had kind of this cult following. It was really huge. And those fans, they called themselves psychos, were pretty instrumental in my recovery as well. Just the love and support I got on social media was quite overwhelming. What was the first thing back after the stroke? First thing back after the stroke was actually the first strike psych movie. It was months after my stroke, so all, really pretty much all I could do was sit in a chair. And they shot the scene where it was like a FaceTime call. So it was pretty much a cameo. But I, my face didn't really move for it, and it was very stiff and... What were you like mentally? Mentally, I was ecstatic to be back with these friends of mine and playing this role again. I mean, I never thought I'd, I'd work again. So to be able to claw my way back, and I mean, it was really terrifying to, to do this thing that, you know, I'd, like I said, I've done my, I'd spent my entire life doing, and a lot of it was muscle memory, and then those muscles aren't there anymore. Tell me about Lassie came home or come home. Lassie come home. <laughs> I still guess. That is a funny title. <laughs> So my character, Lasser, very tough macho cop, gets shot on the job and has a stroke on the operating table. So the, it takes, the show, the episode, the movie centers around my recovery. They took a lot of stories that I had from real life and the real home that I recovered in and put them into the movie, which was great. Wow. Yeah, this, Steve Franks and James Roday are our writers and producers and just two of the most creative you have to feel blessed. I'm incredibly blessed. Is it fun? It's the most fun I've ever had on, on a job. People always say to me about, it's like, you know, it looks like you guys were having so much fun. It's because we were. We had the best. We were dear friends who just, who'd worked together, knew each other's rhythms so well. It was just an ongoing thing of making each other laugh. It was a pretty lucky, tremendous life I've had. Next, we get to know Timothy better with a round of If You Only Knew. Don't go away. We're back with Timothy Amazon, a great story, and he's a terrific talent. Um, how do you think Hollywood treats actors with disabilities? Generally, not very well. There's just not enough of it. There's not enough opportunities for us. But ho I'm hoping to change that. Believe to be more visibility for people with disabling injuries. No, they're, they're absolutely. I mean, my, after my first episode of This Is Us, I had so many people reach out 
and say how amazing it was to see someone who's had a stroke represented on TV because they'd never seen it before. And you, you, you intend to stay with this, the career keeps going, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what my career's gonna hold. I don't know what kind of parts I can play. It's probably not gonna be what it used to be. I mean, I'm not jumping on a horse or chasing a guy with a gun anymore. But hopefully I'll work around and figure out other ways to do it. And maybe the next phase of my career is maybe even just becoming the face of stroke recovery. I don't know. But I really want to be able to use a platform I've developed over the years to help those and inspire those who've gone through this. I mean, after my first, after I was the stroke, I never, I didn't know what was, the future was going to hold. And I, like I said before, I'm in this clinic, and I, so I get to see the people in this clinic for two years, and I see their daily recovery. And it's just really this group of, like we're kind of a team. You know, see, that there's Bob. Bob can walk today. And so it's really encouraging to be a, each other's cheerleaders. So I had the benefit of seeing other people around me getting better. Where I think a lot of people out there who have gone through something like this don't have the benefit of a community like that to, to support them. You're lucky in that regard. I'm incredibly lucky. Okay, we do a round here of rapid fire questions. It's called If You Only Knew. Something or someone who inspires you? Some blur. Who's an actress who's been talking a lot about her struggle with MS? And she's a single mother who's really hit immense ad adversity. And she has a very active Instagram account that's really inspiring. So I check that every day to see how she's doing. And who's your favorite superhero? I'd say Batman. Me too. Best piece of advice you ever got? Be patient. What's the worst piece of advice? <laughs> I got to think about that one. Worst, I probably tried to forget the worst piece of advice. Yeah, good idea. Guilty pleasure? Politics. Politics? Cover, I mean, watching politics. That's, yeah, I guess that's a guilty pleasure. Especially these days. Yeah, sort of my sports. If not acting, what will you be doing? Be a teacher. What television show are you currently binge watching? We just finished Succession. If you could play any character from history, who would it be? The JFK. Biggest risk you ever took? Trying to be an actor. Strangest fan encounter. There's been a few of those. Strangest one would be um, being given a doll that looks just like me. A doll. A handmade doll that looks just like me. That was that's weird. I still have it though. <laughs> Something that never fails to make you laugh. My oldest daughter laughing. Biggest splurge? Suits. Something you would tell your younger self? It's all gonna be okay. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. This personality you have has got to have helped you through this. I would think so. You're a laid back guy. I mean, I've always been glass half full, whether some people are, don't even have a glass. So I'm lucky, I feel lucky that I have a glass. In our final segment, Timothy is back to answer your social media questions. We'll be right back. We're back with Timothy Amundsen, and we're going to give you some social media questions. And there were a ton of them. Hit me. Melancholy photo on Twitter. What's the one thing he'd want everyone to know after all he's been through over the past few years? how lucky I am. You consider yourself lucky. I consider myself incredibly lucky. The fact that I can still speak, that it, the stroke didn't affect my memory, I'm intensely lucky. Jackson Badger on the Larry King Now blog, which project has the best dance choreography, Gallivant, Psych, or Luck of the Irish? Gallivant. Uh, Karen Jeeger on Twitter, will you return for Supernatural season 15? I'm not in charge of that, but I would like to. Do they know you want to come back? I think I, I put that, I've laid that foundation with 
Jared and Jensen. Stacy222 on Twitter would like to know what is his most memorable or favorite moment working on Supernatural? Supernatural was the Kane fight scene with Jensen, Ackles. All day long, beating the hell out of each other in a barn. <laughs> Get hurt? I didn't. Uh, Lassie fan on Twitter. We've already been an advocate for adequate accessibility to businesses and outspoken about healthcare reform. Now that you've been immersed and in need of both accessibility and healthcare, what does he think improvements can be made or need to be made? There could certainly be improvements in accessibility. Just to buildings and, I mean, everywhere we go. Whether it's a bathroom that has railings or stairs up to a building, I got invited to a dear friend's 40th birthday and I couldn't go because it was, it was upstairs at a restaurant. There were, there were like 70 stairs to get up without railings and no elevator. So there's I just- I ramps are a law. I thought they were too. And then they can, they can always get the clause of, oh, it's an old building. Hmm. Under the feather on Twitter, uh, what form would you choose from a gallivant revival? TV, film, stage? Who would, you, who would be on your guest star wish list? It'd be a stage version. Gosh, wish, list, wish guest list would be on. Um, I'd like Ricky Gervais to come back. I'd like Laura Benanti to be on it. Uh, Mend11630 on Twitter. Do you feel a certain responsibility to the roles you play now to ensure that stroke survivors are portrayed properly and with dimension? Yes, I do. Well, I mean, I, think I feel responsible for any disability that's portrayed has to be done correctly, preferably by someone who actually has the disability. Acoustically on Twitter, what advice can you give to people who are going through your own sort of obstacle to help them keep fighting? Just to know you can recover and you just have to keep moving forward. There's only looking forward. Looking back is not going to do you any good. Uh, Ring Lady on Twitter asks, Rob Benedict said music therapy helped him after his stroke. He said he could sing before he could talk again as a harmonica player. What therapy helped you the most? Probably listening to music and trying to hum along with it. I still, uh, my voice took a big hit, so I can't sing as well as I used to. And, and I don't quite have the longs for harmonica anymore. And it's hard to play with, I mean, you can play with one hand, but I was always better with two hands playing a harmonica. So I'm still developing that skill or trying to get that back. That all helps, right? It all helps, totally. Timothy. Mr. King. Nice to see you. Likewise. Thanks to my guest, Timothy Amundsen. Psych 2, Lassie Come Home will premiere next spring on NBC Universal's streaming service. Peacock is that service. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time.